Okay, I'm a host now. I can yes, see. sounds good. So we'll start in a couple minutes. I think almost everyone's joined already. We should have 20 people or 19, I think, because we have 22 here. people on right now. Yeah, but that's wait, including us. People, wait, 19 students, right? 19 students, because you said one of them can't come to. Can you guys see my screen? So, yeah, yeah, we can see your screen. Yeah, yeah. Wait, students, wait, we should have 19 students plus students. Yeah, but then one, we have two, the three, four, we have five, five TAs. And, I mean, not five TAs. We have two TAs. Five people. Two of us, and then my dad. Plus, yeah, we so should have twenty. Not everyone's on yet, so just give it like a minute or two more. Oh, and my mom. So that's seven people. I know some people here. I can see Arav. I know Arav. Vivek, of course. Where's my other daughter? I'm here. She is? Okay. All right. I see my wife too. And it's more like a family, Vivek's. Anyways, so uh, I think we can start in like, do you want to start Vivek or? We can wait two more minutes because only four or two. All right, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go out for a second and get back. Did anyone start the homework? No, you don't, Ayush. Thank you for doing that for us, by the way. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm recording today. Um, did anyone start the homework besides Ayush? No. No? No, a lot yeah, of people have. Starting it already. Anyone want to just like briefly, like while we wait, just talk about the article? <laughs> you want to just talk about the article that you um, read? Sure. Yeah, go for it. So I did something about computer science and gaming, oh. like video games. Yeah. So I really plan to be um, a video game designer when I grow up. Oh, uh, that's so cool. That's cool. Do you remember me when you got famous? I think so, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> An article about NASA. Wow. No, that's a hot area. NASA. Space and theater. Brayden, what did you read about? Uh, I was reading about computer science in the medical field. Oh, very relevant to today. Anything interesting or worth like sharing? No. <laughs> Ooh, what are basketball analysts like? Literally, oh, sports, sports analytics. Yes, like oh. Daryl Morey, right? Artificial T cells. Wow. Good stuff. Yay, I'm really happy you guys are reading about such interesting stuff. We want you guys to explore a lot of interdisciplinary areas. Because yeah, when Arav is like a six foot tall basketball analyst and a basketball player, and Ayush is like creating artificial T cells and like curing cancer, then um, yeah, remember me. Um, I read an article about computer science and music technology. Oh, okay. Yeah. We have classes about that in college also. There are actually majors in several colleges about music and technology. Yeah, like EDM and all. Should we start, guys? Yes. Four or four. So we're yeah. just, we're just we waiting start. for you. Yeah. Okay. So um, do you want to start by briefly introducing yourself and then start the presentation? Absolutely, great. So thank you everybody. Really, really appreciate you all giving me a chance to come and present today. When, uh, when Shreya told me about this presentation, she wanted me to do, I'm like, what? I'm like, talk to kids about what I do. And so it, it took me a few days to get my head around it, but I hope I've done a decent justice to this. And uh, um, my name's Harpal Kocher. I've been in the industry for about 20 years now. Um, started as a software engineer, hated my job every goddamn day uh, for almost seven, eight years. Then I said, you know, I've learned enough about software. Why don't I get into selling? So uh, 
I started selling software versus making software. So I sucked at building software. Then I started selling it. I did well at that. At one point, I figured I'm, I need to go back to my roots. So now I'm back in the role of a software solution architect. I work for a company called Salesforce, uh, which is a massive building out of uh, San Francisco. If some of you have seen that huge building. But so, yeah, that's my story. Came from India to the U.S. at the age of 24. And... Um, I had two brats of kids. Don't tell them I call them brats, but uh, I think they're on this line as well. Uh, and I have a beautiful wife who's also on this line. So um, big thank you to you guys for giving me a chance to listen to you. Uh, it means a lot to me because um, CS is why I am in this country or CS is what pulled me out of poverty into the riches of life. So without computer science, without having this ability at your age, when I was exposed to this knowledge, um, without sticking with it, I would not come to where I have come to in my life. So I owe a lot of where I am to this. And uh, this presentation is not as much towards some of you hotshots who are already talking about building games for NASA. And that is awesome. You guys can do it. That's great. In some ways, I'm really appealing this presentation to some of you who are on the on the fringe who are saying, what is this garbage? What is this nerdy stuff? Do I have to do this in my life? And I'm here to tell you that, you know, if you do it, you can do really well in your life and initially it sucks and uh, that's the advice I give to everybody saying just suck it up for about two, three years, you'll start seeing light at the end of the channel of the, of the road here. So with that, um, here's where I work, um, you know, uh, I work for Salesforce. This is a tall building that you see in, the, in there in um, San Francisco and um, this is the view from the top of the floor on the 61st floor. You get to see the view outside of the entire San Francisco. It's a kind of a 360 view. If you walk around, you can see the entire city because this building is circular. So you're standing right here on the top of the 61st floor. So if some of you are nice to me and stay in touch with me, I might take you on the 61st floor uh, post COVID. Uh, Shreya still hasn't gone, neither has Dia. But you know, if some of you are nice to me, I'll take you. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of the place where we work. Like this is literally, like where we sit and work. And I wanted to show you a picture of this is because you typically see a picture of kids working in computer science in like a dungeon in a sitting in some kind of a garage and working. You know, computer science can be really cool. You know, we get to work in really nice places, get to see, get some great nice food, get to work from home. Uh, it's great stuff and build some good swanky software. Like you can see the stuff and I'll talk more about what we do as well. Okay. Now this presentation is all for you guys. Okay, so Q&A is all fair questions, no dumb questions. Ask any question anytime you want. This session is only for you. Okay. So this is my early years of struggle when I was doing CS. I was not a bright kid. I still am not very bright, but uh, honestly, calling myself a B-grade student is actually giving myself a, a compliment because I I really sucked at studying, um, but I. I had something going with me was I somehow survived. I hustled my way. I made friends with the best kids in the class. I copied assignments and I would land up getting a B. Okay? And I believe this statement in between that calls out computer science is for people who are too stupid for engineering, mathematics and real science is absolutely true. I mean, CS is one of the easiest sciences you can do. This is no nerdy stuff by, you know, about physics and learning about quantum science and none of that you know, shouldn't call it garbage, but uh, oh my God, I would start sleeping in my class when they would start talking all those things in front of me. And I said, computer science is good. It's, you know, it's not that bad. I can learn it. It's not rocket science. And uh, it takes a little bit of time. It's like physics and chemistry and stuff. You, if you work on it in a couple of days and nights and have a few mentors, you can learn it fairly quickly. Computer science, there is no way. There is, you know, you just have to slog it out. You will start with, I hate programming. I hate why am I doing this? This this I hate phase is literally like two years. And Shreya is going through that right now. She says she likes it, but she hates it. I know it, okay? But very soon it starts working. You start getting the adulation of the crowds. And in very soon, even though I still hate it, but I love the fact that people love the fact that they think I'm a good programmer, okay? Uh, she still thinks I'm not good at programming, but oh well, that's a discussion for some other time. So that's my uh, life. Um, in 1996, when uh, I, I always tell people, invest in a rising tide. You never want to work in a, a field which is, you know, old. Like for example, for you kids, uh, Java would be old, or you know, um, um, what else would be old? Uh, Client-server technology, or working on Oracle and some of that stuff would be floppy old. Floppy disks. 
floppy disk is is a floppy disk was only ancient even in my time so i'm i'm pretty cool okay so uh, but what i'm saying is invest in something new like in 1996 i i was just one year out of college and this technology called java had just come out at that time and it was a paradigm shift internet was completely new you know you had to dial into using a modem to get to the internet you wouldn't just get access to internet you had to dial into a computer you you kids won't even understand what i'm talking about because this is hard stuff okay but we did it and uh, my point is that this you know java was new i jumped onto it and because i jumped onto it and i said i'm cool at this there was hardly around anybody who could challenge me on it because people knew older technologies people knew oracle people knew uh, c c++ and i came in as i know java you know to ask me any question and i had the confidence of a hustler on my face and before you know i was called i was in bombay growing up that time and a company called me into a office in uh, oberoi towers which is a, a big hotel in bombay and they called me into a room and they said we're going to interview you i'm so like, okay great ask me questions about java and they said no 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 we don't know anything about java we're going to put this computer this camcorder this is actually like a handy camcorder you kids are used to using phones to take videos in those days people had these kind of you know uh, equipment to take uh, videos and so they said just speak in to this video or this camcorder for like half an hour everything you know we will send this like shreya was calling it floppy disk there was a cassette over here they said we'll send this cassette out to people to um um to evaluate your skills and they will say if you're good or not right that's how few people knew what java was and i spoke like a moron for like straight half hour in front of this camcorder and they said okay we'll get back to you and you know what happened in through through in 3 weeks or 2 weeks they didn't come back to me what came back to me was a visa to go to the us they didn't even interview me on the phone they just sent me a visa they spent money you know they didn't even make me an offer they made me an offer which i honestly could not even refuse and i was within 3 weeks i had a visa in my hands 6 weeks after taking this class in java i was in the us my point is pick up a rising tide that rising tide for you is what shreya is teaching you now the basis of that paradigm or what vivek and shreya are talking is python that is what gold is going to be because that's what is the basis for machine learning as you go about with it and we'll talk at some point more about why that is the new basis for machine learning and newer technologies are you guys with me so far i mean am i just speaking too much or um, i sometimes get very passionate yeah give me a thumbs there's, up or something if you guys um in the the chat there's um ayush patel has a question about uh he said i got the question sir yeah go ahead he What's said was this like arpanet or legitimate internet oh honey it was after arpanet arpanet was in the 80s so i this was 90s when tcp ip had already come out and arpanet was in the 70s and 80s what do you guys think how old do you think i am <laughs> i mean this is you know, this is Did you guys call me on the call to you know get me like an offended and all or what? It's like I am I'm 47 years old, but I'm not that old for Arpanet, dude. Now come on, I like it. So I'm just kidding. Yeah, Arpa, right? yeah I I had to search that up. So bonus points for you to know for knowing. No, I know, that. I know. Not oh, you. I'm asking. I'm saying Ayush Patel. Bonus points to him. I'm pretty sure Ayush was trying to trip me off, saying you know let me see how much does this guy know about Arpanet. I can talk about Arpanet, but yeah. Anyway. Um, nice try, guys. But yeah, keep keep the questions coming, and Shreya, keep moderating the questions. Yeah, I'll let we'll you know. We'll go from there. Okay. Um, this is machine learning. What is today? Right. This is what you guys. Uh, what happened? Um, okay. Um, you know, reasons why you should be doing computer science. I mean, this is great. I applaud you guys for coming in and doing CS today. Um, without cs nothing not much works right there's so many jobs when when donald trump and these guys say there are millions of jobs but people haven't taken those jobs it's programming jobs they can't find people who have those skills even i can't do machine learning coding today because i grew up in a certain way so for you kids who are learning about machine learning right out of the box this is a awesome time because you can even leap from people like me i leap from people because i knew java i knew tcp ip i knew the internet there were people i tell you i was i gave presentations to people who had like 20 years experience i was one year out of college and i like a smart ass would go and give presentations about the internet to people and their eyes would their jaws would drop okay because i knew something new which they did not know and it's very hard for older people to learn when you're going to come out in the marketplace people like me will not be able to pick up to what you will know 
that's going to be job guarantee that's how you're going to make your millions okay shreya do you want to talk a little bit about what you do with the uh, brain uh, mining and in you know, a python and you, you know and vivek you're doing some cool stuff too yeah, what are some really, of the applications what do yeah, you like? so, yeah i'll i'll just talk about mine for like a couple of seconds and then vivek will t- uh, vivek can just talk about like his research and stuff he's been working with but for me at least uh, um i've been working like recently like the stuff i've been working with is like i've talked to you guys about this before but like it's like the brain is a computer and we're basically figuring out you know how your computers store memories we're trying to see how our brain stores memories how like if i let's say i smell a cookie and i think immediately of my grandma i'm like oh wow like i just smell a cookie in some random bakery and i'm like oh my grandma used to make cookies that's like some random memory you're getting you're just pulling it out of somewhere based off of something you stored in your brain and that's exactly like what we do in computer science what we do in computers <sighs> or this memory and then it uh is used to so something else later on so okay. everybody on mute uh, everybody on mute someone is sp- someone is speaking okay all right great uh, vivek did you want to talk about yours a little bit yeah sure yeah, so right. i've done some uh implementation of machine learning in like autonomous vehicles i did an internship at ford so there's a lot of computer vision and object detection in which Uh, of course the car needs to know what's in its path how to react accordingly right so you would make programs uh to identify objects you need to train like different models if i don't know if you've heard the word neural network before you train these so then it would en- essentially act like as if you had a human just detecting everything in front of you so it would know how to react and then also i've been doing some research in something called unsupervised learning uh it may be a little complex for you guys if you guys haven't heard much about machine learning but uh, it's essentially a way for computers to uh det- determine uh features of different uh, data or whatever you pass it in by itself so you're not giving it a label like for example uh, you've probably heard of uh you pa- in supervised learning which means you give it image of something and you tell it what it is so if i give it an image of a dog i'll say this is a dog and the computer will keep learning and learning and unsupervised learning you give it an image of a dog give it an image of a cat but you're not telling it what it is it's just going to find similar features between images and make groups or subgroups out of them yeah so the point here like between both my and vivek's work the reason why we brought it up it just involves the computer learning and like trying to copy the human brain or copy the hum like a, a human type of learning and now like a machine is able to do what we ourselves do and at a much faster rate so we don't have to do it ourselves anymore anyways that's great thank off. you so much guys appreciate yeah. you both chiming in in fact uh, i want to ask uh, geetika as well to chime in with her experience i mean both uh, what vivek is talking is still fairly rocket science oriented what shreya is doing is awesome with you know with this whole uh, working with the neural networks and neuro knowledge you know just the whole anatomy of the brain but you know geetika didn't start too long ago 6 years 7 years ago she she really or for more less than 10 years ago she got into the field she works for kaiser permanente and uh, you know she does she's not a software programmer um she doesn't write code but gitika you want to quickly give an uh, update on what do you do and how is your job exciting um yeah sure um so so for me i so i i hope all of you or most of you know what kaiser permanente is and what they do so they have their hospitals and they have their um insurance policies um so if any one of you has seen the kaiser um kp.org their website or if you are members uh, or or even for other uh, if you have other uh, if you go to other doctors or other places they all have websites now so uh, what i do is i basically work on um designing those you know how the different features that we offer like um you can schedule an, an an appointment online you don't have to call in or you don't have to go in or you can send your doctor a message so those kinds of things so what i do is uh, and as harpal mentioned i'm fairly new um i got into i changed my career i got into this field about 10 years ago um i got trained here which wasn't which was very interesting it was hard at that time it seemed hard at that time but i love my life now so um i i basically work with you know in in designing i don't develop i don't do the technical work but i work with my my um my partners who want that uh, you know i ask them what they want and what they want the feature to look like and how they want it to work and then i work with the technical team which is the developers and the people who do the coding and stuff and i tell them that hey this is what they want and this is what it should look like 
and uh, I, you guys need to go build that. So this is how we, it's, it's a lot of people involved, but it's, it's fun, you know. So there are a lot of different aspects within the field also. You don't have to uh, go into one particular aspect of development or, or whatever, but there are a lot of different angles within this field as well. Got it. So that's, Thank you, that's all, yeah. Yeah, so you, you heard multiple perspectives, you know, from me, Geetika from the field, Vivek upcoming, Shreya upcoming, you know, so hopefully that gives you a, a, a view, you know, into what life is for all of us and uh, uh, you, you persist along the way. So what does it take to become a software engineer? Um, really, it's problem solving skills. The ability to take problems, large problems, break it into small pieces, start solving one small problem at a time, attention to detail uh, when you start writing code uh, attention to detail when Gitika goes and talks to your doctor and says hey what do you guys want and they say i need to i need my people to my patients to submit uh, you know um, their appointments online she has to go into details to understand what exactly which what kind of patients what what will the ui look like she has to pay attention to saying uh, this is the mindset of my patient. Uh, my typical patient who, for whom I'm designing the software is maybe a, a 60 year old lady who's the persona for which she is designing the, the screen. So what kind of colors have to be shown, right? Attention to detail is very, very critical. Uh, clear communication with all the stakeholders, very important. Clear communication to say what you're building, what you're not building. Continuous learning, this is super critical. You have to, in our field in software, you cannot just learn once and go away. You think Python is cool today? It'll be cool for about three years. It's, be, it's already been cool for about three, four years. It's got another three years of being cool. The next guy is going to show up on the scene. Good thing is you don't have to spend that much time on learning the new thing if you've picked up your basics very well. Teamwork, working in multiple teams is super critical. You can't work as a lone wolf in this field. You have to work with several developers, understand their coding style, several salespeople, several other product managers. So just a big teamwork. But emphasis, empathizing with the end users is super critical. When Gitika builds the software, she really has to get in the mindset of that end user to say, it, will this be a person be able to use what my developers are building? Because engineers, if you left it for the engineers to build things, the world would not really be in a good place. So you need people in between. Uh, so there's place, there's room for everybody for different kinds of skills to make an effect in this field. Uh, some of you will go on to become data scientists. That is really the data is the new oil as they call it. Uh, the fact that Netflix can show you an awesome movie saying recommend a movie to you is because millions of like people like you have watched a movie. As Vivek was talking about unsupervised algorithms, the fact that you can go on Google and say, give me a picture of a, of a dirty looking cat. And Google understands what that means and shows you a picture of a dirty looking cat. It's not because somebody sat behind and wrote that, uh, you know, what a dirty looking cat looks like. That's unsupervised algorithm. That's the skills data scientists bring to, this, to the table to understand how to program a system, how to tame a computer to start understanding these skills. Big thing is critical thinking, communication, problem solving, organizing, statistics. Notice the key thing I talked about earlier. There is no knowledge of chemistry. You don't need to know rocket science. You're not talking about anything about chemistry to do this stuff. That's my point that this is a field which does not require as much depth of knowledge. If you are a, if you are a good student, that's awesome. If you're like me getting B grades in life, that's okay too, you'll still do well. Just hang in there. That's most important, okay? Um, is there anybody over here who's never had boba? Please raise your hand. Anybody who does not know who boba is, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, Shreya, oh yeah, Dia, you can put your hand down, okay? But clearly, right? This is what you guys already know. This is a successful business called Tipan. Yeah, we have okay? a couple of kids who said me, Ayush Patel and Shivam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure they did. They, they've never heard of uh, this one. No, either, no, no. Right? They've never had it. They've never had it. Oh, you never had so. Seriously? Bachal, you didn't have tea pump? Okay. All right. Okay. So I got to take you out someday mm -hmm. over here. So this is what I love about the fact is when Dia, when I take her over there and she's, she's a huge line, she throws a massive tantrum that she didn't get a tea pump for the day. Okay. And it tells me that success of the business, right? How did this business succeed? Attention to detail. They think about their customers. They think about their employees. They're very clear what their product is. If you look at the size of their boba, is much bigger. Their, their glass is much bigger than average. Uh, you know, there, there was another company, which are T4. They were killing it two years ago, right? Nobody goes there anymore. They have a 
good understanding of suppliers. How do they manage all this? How do they manage employee morale? How do they keep customers coming in? How do they know new flavor that they have to build? They manage all that in an application. They build an app, like what you kids call an app on a phone. They put all the information into an app. Okay, that's how it's all managed. Salesforce, my company actually builds apps that can be used by companies like T-Pumps to get more customers, to keep their employees happy, to build new customers or to build new products. Uh, another example is the Harry, for, uh, Harry Potter franchise. Why is it so successful? How do they come up with these promotion campaigns saying, you know, if I let you come in for one day, you can come for two days, you know, for the cost of one. They study, they do market research and all the research is done in an app. All that is work is that's done to understand where people went, what they looked at, is all done within a software system. Some of you might do it on a piece of paper and pen. Some might do it in an Excel spreadsheet. But when you have uh, millions of customers like these guys have, and you have thousands of you know things to look at, all that has to be managed in a system. That system is designed by companies like Salesforce or Oracle or IBM, big companies. I work for one such company, Salesforce. This is how a company would use typically Salesforce. They, you can build a mobile app in Salesforce. You can create a e-commerce website to sell things on the website. You can track where your visitors who are coming to your mobile app, what are they looking at? You can do all this within Salesforce. You can create online communities. So all the people who are buying boba could give ideas using, using a community and people who are buying bobas could come in or the people who make it could see that information. You can have a call center which handles complaints. All that software is managed in a system called Salesforce, okay? Finally, this one is very important. This is very dear to my heart. I believe each of you needs to be a salesperson and I really mean it. I am in my life where I am because I am a salesperson. At the end of the day, we are all salespeople. If you don't believe you are in sales, you suck at whatever you do. Okay, we are all in the job of selling ourselves. That's how we become popular kids. That's how we sell, you know, we get invited to parties. That's how we communicate with the world. That's how we get into good schools. It's because you sell yourself, build that proficiency in yourself. George, being a software engineer is not being about being a nerd at writing 20,000 lines of code. Learn to solve problems. Ask a lot of questions of people. Be curious. One of Dia's friends, I love her because she comes in. Every time she sits with me, she's asking questions to me. She's always very curious, right? And I'm like, this is awesome. She wants to know about life. Of course, my kids don't talk to me much anyways. So, you know, any kid who comes and talks to me, I get excited. But, uh, you know, listen a lot more than you talk. This is something which I need to learn as well. I still talk a lot more than I listen. But if you learn this early, you'll do well. Empathize with people. You don't know where they're coming from. Share your knowledge, whatever you know. Today, what I'm doing is I'm sharing my knowledge. I am trying to help those people who are on the fringe today so they do not leave the field. So share your knowledge. That's critical. Okay, I'm almost done. So, you know, pretty much that's all I had over here. I get excited when I talk about these things, emotional, passionate about this. Uh, any questions, Shreya, that came about, please? I'm asking the kids if they have any questions. They're a little, they're open a little it up. shy. They're a little open, shy also. So. Open up the mics if they want to ask any questions. I'm sure some of them have some questions. Yeah, if anyone has any questions, ask it in the chat or just feel free to unmute yourself and just ask. If not, that's okay too, you know, but uh, many of you are doing, trying to do some, I mean, let me ask you this question. Do you like Python? What you're learning? I mean, do you find it boring? I mean, have you started? Have they, you haven't started, started they haven't started yeah. coding yet. You know, when I started, I started with a language called, um, you know, it wasn't even Visual Assembly? Basic. It was Assembly? some... No, it was after assembly, it was some form of basic. And the first thing that the instructor taught me was he said, A is equals to A plus one. And I'm like, that is so stupid. How can A be equal to A plus one? And he said, it's a variable and it gets assigned, it's in the memory. And he, I don't know what was wrong with that teacher, but he, I till date get nightmares of that class. I was in the seventh grade when I went for that class. There were like 40 of us in the class. I didn't understand Jack, but somewhere along the way, somebody said, this will make you go to America. This will take you to the riches of life. This will get you out of poverty. Somebody said that and I that stuck in my head. So with that, I if you don't have any more questions, I thank you so much from the core of my heart for listening to me. Oh, we, uh, we do have a question. I have a question. Go ahead. Well, well uh, go ahead and ask your question then I'll ask Jenny's question. Whoever said that question, go ahead. Um, go ahead. Do you have, are you a salesperson? I was in sales. Uh, I'm no longer in sales. So yes, I am a salesperson. Let me just 
Oh, okay. I will always be, I will always stay a salesperson, but I was an engineer before. I used to write code. I wrote code in Java when I started my career for the longest time. I was oh. a software architect, and now I'm back. For the last three years, I I gave up sales. When I say sales, meaning field sales, I was in quota carrying sales. I used to go out in the field and sell software, but now I'm back in developing. But ultimately, at the at my core of who I am, I am a salesperson. I'm like right now, I'm selling you on the field. And I hope I did a decent oh. job of that. So, but yeah. We have a. Oh, okay. Was that Omar asking, or was that someone else? It was me. Okay, Omar. Okay. So, um, I, we have a question. We have a couple more questions, actually. Now they're getting. Oh wow! Now we're getting good amount of questions. Yay! Awesome. Um, Yay! Okay, so we actually have a question from Jenny that um she asks, "What advice do you have for persisting in this field and continuing a passion in computer science?" And also, can you speak um like this is just me adding on? Can you speak a little bit towards like for girls specifically? Yeah. So let's talk the first question first, uh, which is, uh, honey, it is it's hard. The field. I mean, it's not hard. That's the that's the worst part of this field. I find it so stupid that it's not hard. It's grunt work. Like for example, it will not make sense. Somebody tells you to write a code of, of uh, Fibonacci numbers or you know or uh, prime number. Give me a make a small program for that, and it, things don't make sense. And it sounds so frustrating when you when a ten line program does not work, and you know some cool kid around you has like a two hundred line program working, and you don't know how to debugging is. You don't know how to use the online help, how to write a function and stuff. You forget the syntax. One day you know the syntax. After two days you forget it again. It is bo- it is very frustrating. But I tell you, if you stay at it an hour a day for like straight six months, or an hour every day, other day for like two years. Uh, yes, that's the difference. You have to stay at this because your memory, short term memory, gets lost. Um, you will get out of it. And with the sooner you start talking to people in the industry, people like me, and seeing how we are doing, the way to not get frustrated is talk to data scientists, talk to engineers in the field, ask them what their job is, how they get a high out of their job, like the kind of thing even Shreya is doing and what Vivek is doing, right? I mean, they get a high. Ask them what their early years were, and you will see some vulnerable sides of them. Hang in there. Um, for women to give up on this field is extremely easy because you're in a classroom with 27 boys and three women. Uh, you know the, the the numbers are already skewed, and when the frustration is high, uh, all it takes is one crazy you know uh, you know sexist joke, and one tends to give up on it. But can I speak to this alone a little bit too? Unless you have... please go ahead, go ahead. No, um, so actually, as a woman in computer science. Um, firstly, for all my girls in this call, um, I'm very proud of you for coming into this internship because it's very scary as a girl to join something that is in a field that's like very male dominated. And like traditionally you see like, oh, men are engineers, women are teachers, this and that. And that's not okay. Like we need to come out of that stigma. So at least like, here's the, here's a statistic for you. 19% of college graduates in computer science are women. 19%. And so that's kind of sad because there's a, that means that like the rest of the graduates are guys or, you know, and like, I know like every single one of you guys on this call, every single girl on this call is brilliant and you can definitely keep persevering at this field, but it gets scary, especially when you have a bunch of guys around you, like they have their own groups, they have their own cliques, they make their own jokes, they make it seem like a girl isn't as good. And I'm not saying that all guys do this it's because I know like, like you guys are, super sweet too. All I'm saying is, is that like, as a girl, it's really important to build connections with your fellow girls, with me, anybody you consider a mentor, you can reach out to me anytime, day or night, anytime you need to college. And if you need help ever with just like trying to get through this field, because like, it's hard with the guys. There's so many organizations. I'm part of many. I have, I'm the president of the girls who code club at my school. I'm part of this other organization called Rewriting the Code. And it's just, all I'm saying is women empowering other women is extremely important for people like Jenny and others who have the same question. That like, how as a woman, or how in general do I stay at this field? And for women, of course, it's just that extra step that you have to escape the sexism somehow. So that's all I wanted to add to that. Understand this thing that actually with COVID and with just machine learning and just the market that has gone, women have been disproportionately been kicked out of the uh, the workspace in general because you know women in general traditionally. Uh, 
held on to jobs which have been lost to automation around, you know, um, and again, I'm not trying to stereotype, but there were a lot of jobs which women held on to, yes. which you're seeing a lot more women leaving industries in general across the board uh, you know, could be just, you know, workflow, like, you know, setting up appointments or, you know, just the kind of things that they were usually a part of. And, uh, uh, and again, it's unfortunate that those field, those jobs have gotten eliminated but software jobs are not, those are going up. So the more you stay over here, even if you get a B grade in a data science class, it doesn't matter. Guys, I failed. So after I, I came third in the state of, uh, in my state of Maharashtra in India, in my first semester, a third semester of engineering, I came third across the state for a project I did in fractals, which is a unique concept, right? But in fourth semester in computer programming, CP2, computer programming second session, uh, by the way, there was a question about what other languages I know. I know Fortran, I know Pascal, I know Java, I know C, I know C++, I know JavaScript, and I know a language called Apex. So, but my point over here is I failed that class, the computer programming class. I didn't just fail in the fourth, grade, fourth semester. I failed even the repeat when I took it second time, okay? And people were like, dude, seriously? I mean, you came third across the country and, and the state level on a project and you're failing this class twice? People are like, whose project did you copy, right? But what was happening was my logic was just getting so convoluted in my head that I, I zoned out, I just made a mess, okay? But that happens, those frustrations will happen. You will go through that. The reason I'm doing well is because I've gone through that crap and I've failed so many times that I'm succeeding more. My odds of succeeding are higher because I've failed. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, there was one more lang There was one more question in the chat, which was, um, "What language do you use to develop now?" Yeah, I mean, right now I write in Apex mostly, which is like a language like Java. So which is not very hard to pick up once you know Java and stuff, or you know, you know Python, you'll pick up JavaScript very quickly. Node.js, you'll pick up very quickly, which are literally the languages of the day. Typically, it's that first language that you do. That's hard, right? And in my case, I started with C++, and I hated that stupid language. But uh, you know, I mean, then I went over to Java, which was no, not a whole lot better. I wish I was in today's world, love starting with Python, so much easier to learn, right? But JavaScript is the language of the day, and Python it is. So do that one, stuff. And uh, oh, one thing I wanted to add on was just about Python. Like uh, we, Vivek and I have talked about this in the lecture before. Actually, Vivek, do you want to speak a little bit? Do you want to just repeat why we're going with Python first? Do you want to so just? So, in general, well, first of all, I think it was mentioned before Python's like one of the no number one language is like one of the top languages people use in the industry uh, now because of its applications in machine learning, computer vision, all those areas. So that's what makes it so versatile. But in addition to that, in general, when you're, it just, if, if you've read, uh, when you guys get, when we start teaching you guys Python, you realize it's really easy to read and it doesn't have any of this weird syntaxes and all like, you know, you need these curly brackets or whatever like that. It literally reads like English. Yeah. So it's really easy for you to understand. So yeah. you won't necessarily get turned off by memorizing so many little things at the beginning. Yeah. And in other languages, the weird stuff is like when they have like a bunch of random like stuff written and you just can't, you look at it and it's super scary. You're not going to have that experience with Python. And even if you do, that's why we have like four, three, four teachers, two TAs, and you can reach out to us at any time to ask us any questions. So um, there were two more questions. Go yeah. ahead. What are the questions? I will read them. Uh, do you want me to read them out? Is that fine? Uh, go ahead. Okay. What advice do you have for people trying to discover the specific field that they want to go into within computer science, um, data science, app development, uh, or game develop game development, etc.? Uh, this is from Arnov. Advice discover of the field. I say you know stay as generic as you can. Um, app development is a commodity because you know it's getting so much easier to develop them, but data science will stay hot for a very long time. Game development, gamification, huge thing. Um, so yeah, I would go, I would bet on data science and then games and then app development. App, like I said, um, you know that's a part part of the past. But uh, anything in data, if you can do, if you can crunch data, if you can go on some of those Kaggle uh, competitions, you know, online and start winning some of those competitions, you start building. You know, if once you start building your GitHub, you know, uh, your uh, uh, rep repository of code that you have checked in and stuff. What's GitHub. I uh, will come to that some other. You can you can capture all those things when you. Uh, 
talk to them next time. But you know, we will go over GitHub later. Yeah. So once I learned Python, I knew the language. How can I apply it to life? Oh my goodness! This is more like a therapy <laughs> question here. Uh, you know that what you will realize is, uh, um, it makes you think systematically. That's very important. When I said talked earlier about. Uh, breaking down problems, large problems into smaller pieces and then making each piece robust and then making a large software out of it or a system, you realize how problem solving is done at a very logical level. You start intrinsically, start seeing big problems as manifestations of very small problems. So it does definitely disciplines you a lot in life. You start becoming a lot cleaner as a person, which is like, you know, you don't, you can't handle too much. Uh, uh, you can't afford to keep your uh, workspace uh, unclean because you just start realizing that if my code is unclean, I start making a mistakes, bigger mistakes. So you start learning those things and those are life skills. It's a site called Survive.io. I have no a... idea what that is. I don't think that's a question. Okay, I use is uh, Sorry if I keep you from Lord what, what's the coding competition? all right if you give us more information? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, if I'm keeping you from oh. what coding competitions would you recommend? Kaggle. I actually, I have, I have a lot of coding competitions that I can recommend you to in Massachusetts. You know, the simplest ones are just Kaggle. Just go online. Kaggle is uh, K-A-G-G-L-E. Uh, I'm sure Vivek knows about this. Uh, Kaggle projects are the way to, you know, you can flex your muscles. Uh, sometimes you have these uh, hackathons that are created. Uh, I will send Vishreya a resume building process, how you want to look good. Like, you know, sign up for some of those most obscure ha hackathons, which nobody has ever heard of. And, you know, where only like 10 people sign up for them. Uh, at the worst, you'll come out like number 10 in that group, right? Uh, but it's very easy to get number three in those kind of competitions. And, uh, put it on your resume, put it on your profile. I came third in a hackathon. You don't have to say, you know, how many people were in there, you know? So yeah. you just have to hustle. Hustling is you fake it until you make it. Okay. Uh, 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 Jenny is just asking me for more information about um, girl to code. And that's something give it to you. I'll, I'll send you guys, I'll send the girls out an email about um, girl to code. This is something I like, I have like the cool part for me and Vivek is that like, since we've been through like, like we've just finished up high school. I'm a year out of high school, Vivek just finished. We have like, we know about all these organizations which we think that would be really useful for you to join. Even the TAs, uh, Harsh and Nikhil can probably give you some advice. So I'll be sending stuff. And my dad just sent a link to Kaggle for Ayush um, and whoever else was wondering. But um, okay, yeah, uh, I will send out ahead. information about Girls Who Code. Okay, two and more just, questions and we'll leave. Okay, so. I just wanted to say one more thing about uh, hackathons. I think they're actually a great opportunity. I only started going in 10th grade, but like, even if you don't know much CS, they oftentimes they have a lot of people there who can help you out. Uh, and you, I think it's just applying CS to like real world problems or some kind of application, which makes it a lot more fun because you get something like tangible out of it. It's not just like you said earlier, writing some Fibonacci sequence code. You're writing something which can be applied. Any other questions, guys? Guys, this is awesome. Thank you so much for giving me a chance. Uh, core of my heart, I'm saying thank you because this means a lot to me. And, uh, you know, um, uh, stay in touch. And, uh, you know, if you have there's, any other questions from Shreya, if you want me to ever come back. In the chat. They're saying yeah, I can see that. I can yeah. see that. So, you know, if you ever want me to come back and talk on some other topic, uh, you can see clearly how shy I am of uh, talking. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll come back and make another presentation from you if you ever need me. Okay. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Later. Thank you. So uh, students aren't leaving yet, just him and my mom. Okay, I'm gonna kick her from the call. Okay, never mind, she's gone. Okay, so oh. thank you guys for being so respectful. This is exactly the kind of behavior that I envisioned from you guys. Like, I'm extremely proud of you. I'm really glad that everyone sat through the lecture and listened. Um, okay, so I guess, this actually ended up going for a lot longer than um, I think Vivek or I expected because you guys had a lot of questions, but they were all really good questions. I'm super proud of you again. Uh, so we wanted to kind of finish up today's uh, class by just going over the um, ethics of AI. Do you guys, yeah. the article that we read on... Um, uh, the one we assigned on Monday. Yeah, that we read. It's okay uh, if you guys didn't read the whole thing because there were some parts which are a little complex, but I think the main goal was just to expose you to, of course, the ethical portion of, you know, how if when we're developing AR, what are its repercussions on the world and what limits we have to take. And I just wanted you guys to form your own opinions on 
what are our limits or boundaries? Where do we cross the line? So um, can we have someone kick off the discussion um, about the article you read? Um, uh, Dia, do you want to start? No. Do you want to start just talking about the, um, like the article that you guys read for homework, the ethics of artificial intelligence? And just like, you know, the article that you guys read on the first, after the first class? 